Hello everyone on YouTube and welcome to a new 3D article tutorial and this time we are going to learn how to create this uh, nice uh, kind of a background or I don't know it's um, it's a nice background made in Maya and um, I recently uploaded this tutorial if you noticed and what was happening is that I went uh, haven't been uh, legal uh, legible to uh, monetize my video so <coughs> I can earn some cash from it and basically the main problem was probably two things that um, I was uh, doing in this tutorial and one of them is directing you through showing you uh, my web browser and browse to some website and download from there something and then I went over uh, Google Images and looked for an image to use which um, I already picked so um, it was a little bit uh, problematic I guess some of, some of the new rules in uh, YouTube uh, platform is uh, more stricted you, you can't break those rules and therefore if you do break them so the YouTube uh, videos won't be eligible to get some cash and uh, this is a little bit problematic uh, even for me because uh, I'm not doing much uh, money of you know YouTube so I know I I don't have to share this with you but if I'm already opening this uh, subject so just so you will know that my her my income from YouTube is about one hundred and twenty dollars that's much uh, of money that I'm creating from those views, uh, your views, and it's not much. It does uh, allow me to uh, some somewhat upgrade my system when I need and, you know, buy a few things like games and stuff like this. But it's nothing, you know, amazing. And um, at least to feel that I'm doing this... Uh, you know, and ha I have some uh, profit from it. Uh, you know, it it does important for me to earn this um, amount of money. Either way, um, I really didn't want to bother you with this, but uh, it seems that it's getting more and more uh, hard to, uh, you know, follow those rules of YouTube according to what they <coughs> expect you to. Uh, you know, follow, and therefore I'm recreating this tutorial and trying not to step again in the same position where I use materials that is not mine. Um, even if we editing this material uh, by showing you the first, uh, you know, the first income, which is the wallpaper that I used, and then edited. Uh, it in Photoshop, it's not uh, legal to do so. So uh, we're gonna try another strategy here. Uh, it's also for me to you know try and calm down myself in this whole subject. So um, uh, let's begin. What are we gonna do? Is I delivered you two links. Uh, I think two links. No, one link, which is uh, a JPEG file of the Penrose uh, shape which you have is you have here in this um, picture and also I did um, um, I, I do want you to go over uh, the web and look for HDRI maps uh, pictures they can be HDRI maps studio uh, studio maps and they can be just HDRI uh, pictures now I'm looking for um, you know you can you can find many packs for free and most of them are not for commercial use so try to avoid those stuff don't don't run into the same things where I was finding myself and you can find a lot of those contents also for uh, you know small amount of money um, and use it or just use the free packs that you have on the webs and basically continue with this, this tutorial so let's uh, without 
saying more than that. Let's start. So this is what we are going to do. And this is Maya opened with the scene, how it looks right now. Okay, now in order to create this, I'm going to uh, walk you through all of the process. And you will need Photoshop, you will need Adobe Illustrator, and you will need Maya. I'm using Maya 2014, and it's really uh, recommended for you to have the same Maya version that, that I have. Otherwise, some of the settings can be a little bit problematic because uh, Maya 2014 come with pre-selected uh, you know, features that in earlier versions uh, those features wasn't enabled by default. So, uh, for instance, I'm giving you an example is that the lights like Spotlight in Maya 2014 already ticked with shadows apply, ray trace shadow, but in the earlier version it wasn't like that. Anyway, let's first open um, Photoshop, okay, so Photoshop, and here we have this JPEG that I delivered you the link for in the description, okay, uh, a Penrose impossible shape. Um, now, this shape, um, we will, this uh, file that I delivered, basically I don't want you to open it in Photoshop, I want you to open it in Adobe Illustrator, but we will do this later on. Okay, first of all what we will do is we're going to create a background which looks like this, okay? And this is a very simple thing to do, so what you want to do over Photoshop, you're going to go over File, New, I'm opening a uh, new canvas which uh, is uh, dimensions is our uh, 33.87 centimeters for each one of those okay the width and the height and this is pretty much the settings click OK and here if you click on this bucket tool or whatever is um, beneath your eraser tool you will click on it and hold you will see those through those three um, features so we're gonna use the gradient tool here and then I want you to choose this icon here okay the linear gradient and I want you to double click on whatever you have here in this box so double click on it and it will open the gradient editor now the gradient editor is pretty simple to use you wanna choose one of those pre-made settings let's say this one okay and you want to click double click on this little uh, box here with the orange uh, color and you want to change it to something like this okay like this one and click OK you want to double click on this one and choose something more bluish like so Okay, now we're trying to make a transition, you know, from green to blue. So double click on this one and I'll change this to blue. Something more of like so. Click OK. So there is a some kind of a sort of transition here that is helping us to get the somewhat the same wallpaper that I used, uh, you know, somewhat the same colors. Uh, though after you've done so you wanna maybe save it so name it as uh, C or something C colors I already saved it but just for the sake of teaching you this so C color and click new so it will be added to your library here to the preset library and then you can click OK just choose it click OK and you will see that this box is updated with this new preset now what you want to do with the tool is simply drag, click, hold and drag somewhere like that and it will create this uh, kind of gradient on your canvas. Now you can do this from a uh, few other, test your, test it, just click, hold and drag and release some uh, other places. You can do it that way or whatever, you know, something like that, it's fine. Now when you satisfy, simply come file save as change the format to JPEG 
and here type in something like uh, background okay very 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 much uh, I don't know whatever background okay so I'm saving it on my desktop and yeah quality 12 maximum it doesn't have to be again this side size of canvas it's very big but anyway now we're gonna go over Illustrator with opening the file that I delivered you so I'm gonna go over Adobe Illustrator and this is the file that I delivered you okay now I'm gonna close this one and I'm gonna no I don't wanna save this I wanna open the file that I gave you just so y it will be easier for you to uh, you know easier for you to follow this step by step kind of click open and you will see this now by default if you don't touch the canvas this is the menu that you will get what you want to do you want to click on the canvas once and then the menu will switch to this menu which will show you the image trace option click on this image trace once wait a second uh, it seems like nothing happened but it did uh, brought like few inches down no, not few inches milli inches click expand you will see the expand button is showing right now so the menu has been changed and you can click expand and what this will do is create some kind of a bluish line uh, on top of your um, Penrose shape okay so it's just like an outliner but it's actually a path and this path is what we are going to use inside Maya to create our 3D uh, shape now um, basically whenever you want to do such a thing you can use it you know you can use any shape you like and I already dedicated uh, one tutorial for this and uh, it's called something with logos I don't know and um, basically you can use any picture you want and you can image trace it you know by uh, all sort of ways I'm gonna take two steps back okay so you will see what I mean you see image trace you have this little arrow here now you have few ways to image trace this now by default it will use the default settings which uh, wouldn't give you that much of uh, you no know, changes it just turn whatever you have in your picture into black and white picture but this is already a black and white pictures so it doesn't really need to do more than that more than uh, <coughs> tracing it you know as it is but if you're gonna use another picture with colors and stuff like this it will take the colors and turn them into black and the rest will be white it really depends on contrast and stuff like that so um, for a black white pictures like this uh, you know silhouette kind of uh, pictures just go with the default and let it do it let, let it do what it does and click expand okay so after you click expand uh, you're gonna go over file save as and you want to save this as Penrose uh, Adobe Illustrator okay let's delete this JPEG extension penrose.ai now I, I already have on my desktop one uh, Adobe Illustrator file like this so it will probably ask me for, to replace this so let's click save yeah I do want to place it because I have one already and here from this box which is very very much important you want to go over version click on this drop down, drop down menu and click on Illustrator 8 okay this will ensure that whenever you import into Maya Maya will load this path uh, into the, your work area if you set it to something else it won't it probably won't work okay now I'm using uh, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop CC and <coughs> this feature still uh, I think it most C th CS3 and later uh, you have this option so even if you don't try some one of them one of the versions or just download a trade version of Adobe Illustrator and just continue with it so click OK 
save it and we're good to go one more thing and just I already said it but just to clarify things you can do this extract a path like so to any pictures you like but it works the best with big resolution pictures and with pictures that have less color I mean some of the pictures with color it will work it will create a nice path and turn everything into black and white but in many cases it will look uh, depends on how much detail you have with this picture uh, it will cause problems so we are focusing on logos and because we are creating a logo it's better to take something that is already a logo but without any add-ons like background and more features that can ruin this logo we want a uh, complete nice good looking logo and this is why we are using black and white picture okay so we save this and we can close this and we can go over Maya inside Maya okay let me shut off Illustrator inside Maya um, what you want to do you're gonna go over a new scene and don't save this and we're gonna start modeling this scene now um, the first thing you want to go over file import you can also drop the Adobe Illustrator path into the scene just by drag and drop but you can also come import and go over desktop and choose this Penrose Adobe Illustrator file let's choose from the file types Adobe Illustrator it will be easier to me for me to uh, find this so this is one this is the one and click import so what you will get is this thing okay you want to grab the um, this curve here and press delete on your keyboard to delete it and you want to grab uh, okay now it's a little bit tricky so basically what we have here for each shape we have two curves okay so for this one we have two of those two of those two of those two of those now the problem is when when I'm gonna um, bevel this it will uh, be dependent the the direction of the beveling will be um, will be relaying on the curve that I've selected so what I want to do I want to uh, take those two apart those two curve for each of them apart so I'm gonna click only click don't drag and select just click on one of those curves shift click on this curve shift select this curve this curve and this curve now when you look from the camera from this side so it might be that you won't accidentally select the other ones so I'm gonna show you I'm gonna move them aside so you see I didn't select those now if I will bevel those uh, probably the beveling will happen will occur to the right side and if I will bevel those the beveling will happen to the left side okay so this is why I'm taking those apart um, obviously because I only need one set of curves so I'm gonna delete those okay this time and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start with this little triangle in the middle you're gonna go over surfaces and menu here and surfaces beveling plus with the default settings if you don't have the default setting click on this edit reset settings close and you wanna go over surfaces and beveling plus this okay so you see now it's beveling to the right side over there so that's fine okay that's not too bad I'm gonna s rotate my camera that way and I'm gonna select this curve right now and press G because G is the last function that I used now take a look if I will open the surface menu here the last function that I used will be highlighted in blue so you see the bevel plus is marked with blue so this is applying also for the G key uh, basically it tells the G key your G letter key on your keyboard that to use the last function which was the bevel plus right now it's not highlighted at least for the first time you open this so let's press G it will repeat the same thing and you can press 5 already to see the polygons you see so I'm gonna press G 
Now, even though I pressed 5, this is not a function. It's just something you turn on, and it's not applying to the G. So, you see, I applied all of them. Now, it's really important that this one, this part, the curve, the last curve, uh, will be this one, okay? Because I want everything to be here in the scene. And you want to grab the pieces one by one, even though you don't see them much and you want to divide them from the curves and simply grab the curve and what I want you to do is delete the inner curves these and I want you sorry something went wrong okay you want to grab these okay and you want to go over edit delete by type history so uh, those polygons won't be related anymore to those crews, okay? And now I'm going to delete all the inner crews and I'm going to grab this curve and I'm going to duplicate it cancel, duplicate it, control D to duplicate it and move it just to this distance, okay? Something like so. Grab both of them go over surfaces again surfaces is from here and then you will see it here and choose loft so this will create this thing here okay now you can go over polygons and mesh smooth this uh, yeah well it's, it's pretty much a subdiv uh, surface so uh, maybe I want to convert it I will convert it over modify, convert, nerves to polygons. Nah, don't do it. Never mind, leave it. Delete those. It's just a little bit too much to deal with. So we will grab this. And what I want you to do now is press Ctrl G to group those. Okay? So now you can see that uh, some one of the object is green and the other is are in white wireframes so what I want to do here is control G to duplicate to control G to uh, group them and they all turn into green this means that they are acting like one unit so whenever I move them they won't get separated and you want to go over modify center pivot for this and you want to click on this magnet with the grid which is snap to grid feature you click on it, highlighted it, and now you want to drag this with your move tool to the center of your grid, which is here. Okay, easily drag it over there. So the middle of the, the center of your axis will meet the center of your grid that way. Now you can turn this off by clicking it again and switch to rotation tool hold down the J and rotate it that way now I want to rotate it 90 degrees so I will put my camera in a way that I can see this now if you accidentally clicked here okay so you you want to come and grab those um, again um, it will only select the parts that you selected they w it won't select them as a group but these parts still in a group so don't create a new group open it instead open your uh, this um, oh I forgot how to, to pronounce out what's the name for this uh, outliner yeah <coughs> so you want to open <laughs> you want to open it and there you will see your group okay it will register it as group one because this is the first group we created in this scene so if you click on the group here, it will select it as group. So don't try create a new group. It just will create more and more groups inside groups and will create a mess inside your scene, inside your outliner. So with that done, um, what you want to do right now is actually exit this group selection and you want to grab those pieces here, okay? one by one I will switch to selection tool shift select this one this one and I don't want to select the bigger piece 
only this little triangle there and unselect this one and I want to bring those a little bit outside like so okay now with that done you wanna um, grab this piece right click choose face you wanna select this face shift double click this face and it will loop select everything now if the shape is completely patched in all those areas then it will loop select everything but if it's selecting just part of those of this loop so double click on the next uh, unselected face and it will continue select it and do so for until you completely select all this loop with that done you want to go over edit mesh duplicate face okay and then you will see this gizmo what you want to do from here is tap on the F8 key on your keyboard three times so one two three and then the gizmo will turn off and you will see two pieces here one is in white and wine one is in green uh, wireframes you want to grab the one in green not this one okay only the piece uh, that contain those faces that we've selected so it will be a little bit tricky here and I will use the outliner to pick this you see this one now they are in grouped I can break this group simply by middle mouse click and hold and take this group out of this group okay and also do this for this one no this one I don't want to move it but whoop, whoop. I wanted to move this one from this group so middle mouse click and drag and we can select this group which is empty you see it doesn't select anything in the scene and press delete and bring this one into group okay so let's select that group again uh, something here is something here is messing a little bit with me I don't know what's the problem but oh there is a transformation means that you need to select those and go over edit and delete by type history so there will be no transformation and it won't get transparent as you've seen this so again selecting this and what you want to do with this you want to go over modify center pivot and stretch it a little bit like so okay now bring it up a little bit and click vertices and you want to grab all those vertices down below and you want to turn the snap to points okay on so click on this and what this will do because we uh, basically just brought this shape above but without uh, playing with the axis too much at all actually so they are straight on top of those which are in this shape this bigger shape here so I'm gonna drag those v points so they will meet with this border of them which is this shape here and yeah you can do this that way or maybe all the way doesn't matter and then I press F8 once or twice to bring it back to object mode turn off the snap to points and I'm gonna bring all these pieces together down to here now what I'm trying to do here is to relay on the grid as my uh, surface my ground and this is the tunnel okay that uh, will we will have in this ground surface so I want to right click choose vertices on top of this shape the tunnel grab all the vertices and apply the snap to grid and then move them up no snap to grid is not uh, is not the option maybe snap to points again no well it should be snap to grid I'm not sure why it's not working though let's turn off this 
snap to grid yeah so now you see it's snapped to the grid and uh, just play with it and while it's snapped to grid you want to turn this off and press F8 once or twice and next what you want to do is grab this piece again control D to duplicate this and you want to bring it to your um, grid surface now I will put this in the grid surface like so and what I want to try and do here is put this item uh, in a way that the grid surface will be in the middle of it like so okay so if you we will take a look at here you can see that the grid is like in the halfway of this triangle so it's more than triangle it's not a triangle one two three four five six okay it can be triangle because there is a six uh, I don't know angles here so bring this like that and now I want you to go over create polygon primitive and make sure that the interactive creation is not marked with a V sign like we have here okay now if it does have a V sign here click on it once and it will turn this V off now by doing this what you're actually doing is whenever you come over the polygon shelf here if you click on any of those shapes uh, it will instantly drop them into your scene with default settings so you want to do this you want to click on the polyplane and it will create a polyplane you've seen how the uh, the gizmo is went there because now it's related to this plane all you want to do here is switch immediately to the uh, scale tool and scale it now you can also see at the outliner that I have a P plane so if it's hard for you to see it or grab this plane uh, just open the, the outliner and uh, choose this P plane one okay now you wanna make it large as your world is no I'm kidding just make it large like so and with that done you wanna grab the plane shift select that copy of your bottom okay we created a copy and you see that now instead uh, of relaying on the grid we relaying on this plane it's the same level as the grid and it cuts it just uh, you know uh, passing through the middle of this uh, shape now you can scale this up a little bit and maybe it will be easier for you to see this but that way okay so now the plane is uh, passing through it and you can grab the plane shift select this one and go over mesh booleans and difference okay now this was a big 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 mistake uh, what I will do here I'm gonna grab the polyplane and switch to the attribute editor and go over the polyplane and I will add some more subdivision width and height now if you are using Maya LT the light version you won't have this uh, so be aware of this and now grabbing these two again first plane shift select this triangle go over mesh boolean and difference and again it's deleting this so undo that let's try delete history <coughs> sorry edit delete by type history and we will try to do this again mesh boolean difference no 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 something is very much weird here um you know what let's not use this one let's use the tunnel i will grab the tunnel control d to duplicate this and whatever i'm gonna bring this you see halfway down not halfway a little bit down and halfway up and you wanna Hmm. Want to grab the, the plane, shift select this, go over mesh, booleans, and difference. Okay, so now it worked, and what actually happened is that everything that was above the plane was disappeared, and everything that was uh, beneath the plane uh, has been 
uh, state. And because we didn't have, we don't have any, uh, you know, patched area that closed this cap here. So this area was stayed open. Now, if you watched the first tutorial I created, um, it was a little bit different. Okay, so um, using an open, uh, you know, kind of uh, kind of shape won't give you that that cap and therefore it will stay open. Now what I want to do here is grab this piece again, which is the piece that we copied uh, to a few seconds ago. Right click, choose vertices, and I want to grab all the vertices uh, at the upper part, which already be selected if you use Maya 214 because Maya 2014 will uh, remember your last selection on, uh, on a shape. So with that said, we're going to apply again these snap to points and now I will snap those into the lower part. So we have this kind of, uh, you see, edge here, which is like a gap or something, I'm not sure. And we're going to attach those to those so they won't overlapping each other, like so. Okay, And then you can turn this off. Now. With that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and choose all the upper vertices. Okay, I'm going to do this that way. I'm going to use, I'm going to select those vertices and then, no, you know what, leave it like this be a little bit different of the other tutorial but at least we have something so the next step is to create our text and this is will be the end of this per first part so create text click on this check box here and you want to go over here and type in whatever you want so I will use 3d artcore and I'm gonna click on this little arrow here to choose my font now by default, not all of those fonts are, uh, you know, working in Maya. So the Lucida Grenade right now, it's the best choice. And you want to go over front style and choose bold and the size 11 and click OK. Now, after that, you want to go over type and choose the bevel. You want to go over create bevel, at, tick the at start, tick the at end, and manually enter any of those uh, values here so bevel width 0 0.1000 bevel the path 0 0.1000 and extrude distance 0 0.2500 and 500k and create cap at start create cap at end bevel inside curve is not ticked here you want to choose convex front edge and here same as outer style so um, so we basically don't need to choose any of there here any of those click apply and I will just come and see this that way all right so yeah we can play with the bevel plus so when you grab a um, the text you will have this tabs here you can open the attribute editor to see this and switch to the bevel plus with the bevel plus you will be able to um, manually uh, you know enter new values if it doesn't look good so let's change it to 0 050 okay so it, that way it looks much better and <coughs> what I will do I will scale this up and rotate it and position it underneath my umbrella no I'm kidding um, my triangle here my pen rose or okay like that all right so um, at the first uh, try of my tutorial I basically break those two apart. The 3D has been at this side of the plane and the art core was 
uh, underneath this thing here so we will do this but right now I'm gonna do it in some other way so at least for now this is it and this is the part one I hope you enjoyed watching this and please don't forget to subscribe uh, also there is a fan page on Facebook where we, where you can stay updated so be my guest and you know like the page and if you have any questions any things you need to be uh, you know you need some assistance on the page is the place to actually contact me because it's easier for me to reply and you know see your uh, comments or your uh, messages so please again do it from the fan page uh, I'm disabling the YouTube comments because I don't like people uh, leaving rude comments on my tutorials so this is pretty much for it thank you for watching again and please stay tuned and watch the next tutorial where we will continue this bye